Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to generate a heat map based on the point data. So I have, so right now I have the crash data available that we can drag it in to import the data set. So as you can see, we have the points data for indicating the crash between 2014 to 2018 um, for the area that in uh, located in Houston. And in order to generate heat map, we can uh, go to appearance and then click on symbology. Um, so we have the option to generate heat map directly from the ArcGIS Pro. So let's click heat map here. So, so we have the heat map generated as you can see. So there are a, a number of parameters we can change in order to um, further refine um, the look of the heat map. So one thing we can change is by changing the radius. So the radius basically is basically searching, um, like based on the one location, how far away does it looking for for the calculation of the records divided by um, divided by the area itself. So if we change to 15, let's see what will happen. So as you can see, the searching radius has been reduced, but some of the hotspots become more obvious. So that's basically comparable. If you have bigger radius, then the searching radius will be bigger, and then the difference between the the location, the density will be uh, will be smaller, as is getting more records surrounding the location. So I think 15 is pretty good. So I'm going to keep that. And the weight field basically is the normalization field. Um, so right now, because I don't have the the other field that I can use to normalize, but if you has if you have other data like traffic counts uh, within the data set, you can use that as a normalization as a tool to normalize it to for compare the heat map. So if you do not have weight field, then it's simply uh, calculating the density as a number divided by the, the area that uh, it is searching for the records. If you have the normalization, uh, the weight field, then it also incorporates the impact of, uh, say, if you have traffic count along um, the road itself, and then you use the um, traffic counts uh, to normalize um, the density and then the color scheme is basically changing the look of the color so right now I have um, the yellow indicates the uh, highest density area and of course you can change to say uh, this one so it's basically changing uh, the lowest density as the green and the red as being the highest density um, but I personally prefer um, I guess the previous one. Well, which one is the default one? I guess I can do. Yeah, so this is the one that I prefer. Oh, I guess it's because it's using some transparency to indicate zero so that we don't uh, be overwhelmed by the all the colors, right? Um, and then the constant and dynamic, um, I s generally do not change it because the constant basically means it remains constant uh, to compare different areas at the same scale. And while the dynamic, uh, the, so the density will be recalculated as you change scale and extent. And the random quality, um, the fastest it takes less Compute power, but is has the lowest quality. So, while well, the best here um, it produces highest quality, but has more requirement on the computing power. So um, it depends on how you want to balance out. So that's it for generating heat map.